All right, we're going to pick it up in chapter 4, verses 23 through 25, and then we're going into chapter 5, okay? So chapter 4 says, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Now we saw last time, back up in verse 17, it says, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And now we have that illustrated. He is preaching that message. And it says that Jesus went throughout Galilee preaching and teaching in the synagogues. There's really no difference here between the preaching and the teaching. Those words, they both have the idea of declaring the gospel. And it says he healed every disease and sickness among the people. Signs, wonders, and miracles serve four purposes in the Bible. Okay? First of all, obviously, to benefit those who are sick or diseased. If you, if you were leprous and Jesus healed you, you benefited. <laughs> no longer being a leper. Second, to show God's compassion and concern towards those who suffer. And that's something we can take. Okay, we can, we can, we can absorb that into our own life. But when we suffer, we know that God cares. We know God cares. Number three, to demonstrate that the speaker has spiritual authority and should be listened to. So Jesus uh, did these signs, wonders, and miracles in accompaniment with his preaching so people would pay attention to what he was saying. Here's somebody that we should listen to. And number four, to show that the message is powerful to save, that the kingdom is breaking through. Right? We know that in the new heavens and the new earth, we know when we spend eternity with Jesus, how many of us are going to get a cold? How many of us are going to get COVID? How many of us are going to struggle with arthritis? No, no, none of us, none of us, right? It's going to be perfection. And so when, when the world, when the new heavens and the new earth happen, and the old heavens and the old earth pass away, everything is transformed. And every miracle Jesus performed, every sign, wonder, and miracle was a glimpse into that. It was a, it was a, a, whoop, the word just escaped me. Just kind of a, a prefiguring of that, kind of a, a insight into that. Okay? So that, that lets us know that if God through this person can heal your physical ailment, then you can believe that God through this person's message can heal your spiritual ailment. And it says here that news about Jesus spread all throughout Israel and even beyond, and people came to Jesus from all over. And notice the kinds of things he healed. Uh, symptoms such as pain, demon possession, neurological disorders, paralysis, whether from a congenital condition or caused by accident or disease. None of those things was a problem or a struggle for him. So tell me what you know about miracles and healings. Miracles are rare. Okay, that's why they're miraculous. Um, mir miracles are a an aberration of the natural order. Um, you know, if ever if everybody like John had used the example of cancer, if everybody who had a diagnosis of cancer got better after three weeks, healing of cancer wouldn't be a miracle, right? Um, so it's just it, it's. It's something unnatural that happens by the power of God. Now, uh, Thessalonians lets us know that there can be counterfeit miracles. But uh, we're talking about the true miracles here done by the power of God. And, and Jesus was a miracle worker, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And still is. I'm not saying that miracles don't happen. They do. They do. How many of you have ever... ever witnessed a healing or a miracle such as that? No? So, 
I, I, I've shared before, the, the one that I have firsthand knowledge of is there was a woman in the congregation, uh, this was when I was preaching in Rockford, who had cancer. And she was about to go in for surgery to remove the cancer. And the doctor said, I want to do another scan just to pinpoint where we have to operate. And the church had been praying for her. And uh, he came back after the scan and says, I have no explanation for this, but there is no cancer there. Now, I can't, I can't tell you how many people I've had in congregations I've served that had cancer that didn't get healed. At a lot of funerals for people who died of cancer. Okay. And I don't, I can't give you a reason why he chose to heal her and not to heal him. I don't know that. Wish I did. <laughs> wish I did, but I don't. Maybe I don't wish I did, but yeah. I don't know why that is. 